Now, as a final part here, I wanted to look at index notation and the Einstein summation convention. Index notation is also sometimes known as the tensor notation. What do I mean by that? Well, best understood with a illustrative example. So if we have three x coordinates, we just represent them as x i, where i can be 1, 2, and 3. So, for example, think of your um, equation of motion. Velocity is velocity 0 plus acceleration times time. Now, in vector notation, this would be velocity v is velocity 0, v0, plus the acceleration vector times time. So this is what we would just refer to as vector notation. We can also write this as tensor notation. We would write this as vi equals v0i plus ai times t. And in this case, they are equivalent. The reason why we might want to use i instead of the arrow above will become clear when we talk about second order tensors. So this really here, both of these are just shorthand for three equations, namely v1 equals v01 plus a1t. Yeah, so both of those notations, the vector notation or the tensor notation, are shorthand for these three algebraic equations. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is the Einstein summation convention. And the way to illustrate that is looking at the dot product between two vectors. So we have a dot b is your standard way of writing this. Uh, if you write it out in terms of the elements, it's a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3 in three dimensions, 3D. And you could write this using a summation convention as a i b i, where i goes from 1 to 3, right? Summation over a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, 3, 2. And now the only trick, the only special thing about the Einstein summation convention is that you write this just as a i b i and you omit the summation sigma. And the reason why you know that this is summed over is because you have repeated indices and summation over repeated indices is understood. That is the Einstein summation convention. And we will do one quick example here, which is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which in vector notation is just that the square of the dot product of two vectors is always less or equal than the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors. So the way you write this in Einstein summation convention is, let me write this out first, well, a, a dot b we just saw is just a i b i. So a i b i squared has to be less than, and let's write out the magnitude squared of vector a, which is just a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared times so a i b i squared is equal or less than, let me write it out again, a1 a1 plus a2 a2 plus a3 a3 times b1 b1 
So if you look at those two terms of the product here, you realize you can just write this as the sum of, let's use a different dummy variable here, aj, aj, with j going from 1 to 3. And the same over here, you can just say this is bk, bk, with k going from 1 to 3. And the reason why I'm using different indices here is because I want to sum over the three components, one, two, three here, independently of what's going on with the A's. Yeah? So I go J, one, two, three, K, one, two, three. But Einstein, with his summation convention, tells us that we don't actually need the summation sign. We just can write this as A, J, A, J, B, K, B, K. And so A, I, B, I squared is just A, J, A, J, B, K, B, K. Or, even shorter, A, I, B, I squared is A, J squared, B, K squared. And this is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality written in index notation. Whereas we started up here with vector notation.